This is the LG C10. I bought this for £1,799 and for me personally, it's one of the best purchases I've made for a TV thus far. Now, if you consider three price ranges of brackets for TVs, let's say the low range is anything up to £1,000, the mid range is anything from £1,000 to £2,500, and let's say the high range is anything above £2,500. For me personally, and from all of the users and reviews that I've seen online, I think this is the number one best TV you can buy in that mid-range bracket, and I'll show you why. Now this video might be a little bit long, so make sure you go ahead and check out the chapters that I've linked down below. You can scrub through any category if you'd like to skip to any one of those that you like. Otherwise, let's go ahead, unpack this, set this up on the wall, and let's see how this performs. Okay, as you guys can see, I've bought the 65 inch. You can get this in various different sizes. I've gone ahead and mounted this on the wall. I've got a bracket that allows me to pull the TV quite a bit outwards away from the wall as well, giving me easy access to the ports at the back, but I can also swivel it left and right and tilt it slightly up and down, which I think is very convenient. As you guys can see, it is very reflective. So you might want to position it in a space where you don't have a window on the opposite side, where it's always going to get some sunlight. So that's a key thing to remember. Now, in the box, you get the stand, you get the power cable, and you get the remote control. I cover all of the points on the remote control in a second, but I'm gonna cover the design and the ports that come on this first. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead, and one of my favorite parts is to peel off the protective covering on the screen. As you guys are probably aware, this is razor thin. I really love this design, it's so sleek. If you come to the bottom half of the TV, this is where you'll find all of the ports. Now along the left hand side, you can see that there are three HDMI ports there, and then you also have one USB port. You also have a card slot there as well. Now if you are going to wall mount this, just make sure you're aware of this because you might not have clear access to the ports at the back, but I brought a bracket that allows me to bring this quite forward and allow me to tilt it. So here's an example, let me just tilt it that way. There you go. Very easy to get access to the ports. So let's take a look at what's back here. On the left-hand side, you have the audio output. You have the optical digital audio output there. Underneath that, you have the LAN ethernet port there. And just to the right, you have the antenna port and the satellite input. You have one more HDMI input and you have two USB ports there as well. One thing I like about this TV that's not so popular on all modern TVs is that every single HDMI port is 4K at 120 Hertz. So HDMI 2.1 is key, especially if you wanted to future-proof your TV for things like next-gen gaming and future consoles that you can connect to it for absolutely fast refresh rates. Okay, so moving on to the remote control. You can see this is pretty standard. It's got all of the buttons that you need. I like the fact that it's got Amazon and Netflix dedicated buttons to turn on those on-demand services but this has plenty of apps inbuilt into the TV as well. You also get two AA batteries that come inside the packaging to put that straight into the remote control. One thing I like is that you have this scrolling wheel, kind of like what you have on a mouse. It's very nice to scroll with, and it's very easy to cycle through the different menu options. You also have the directional buttons on here to cycle through various things, but this is a magic remote, so you can point it at the TV and it will have a cursor for you to select items directly from pointing and shooting. So now let's take a look at some of the technical specifications. As you can see, this is an OLED and it has AI ThinQ, which essentially is the voice assistant. So you can say things like, hi LG, and you can give it commands as if you're talking to your friends. And the more you use it, the better it gets. So that's pretty intelligent, to be honest. It also comes with the WebOS smart platform. In terms of the processor, it has LG Alpha 9 Gen 3 processor, which is perfect for 4K streaming. It also has Freeview HD inbuilt into this. It also comes with NVIDIA G-Sync, which is great for stutter, lag, and flicker-free gaming. What I really like about this, it has Apple AirPlay 2, which is inbuilt into it, as well as Apple HomeKit. So 
I'm going to be creating a ambient lighting setup with Philips Hue light strips and light bulbs, connecting it to the TV and using Apple HomeKit. So make sure you subscribe so you won't miss that video. But you can also use Google Assistant on this as well and it has inbuilt Alexa. Now just wanted to get your attention to the energy rating. Now you can probably see this is G rating, which is pretty bad. But as of 1st of March, 2021, the EU TV standard regulations were updated and as a result, more or less all the popular TV models are now rated G on the EU's new stricter energy scale. That's designed to encourage TV makers to develop more energy efficient displays. But you can probably see this is rated G because of the HDR input if you are watching it on that. But the A rating that this TV is, is the old standard. All right guys, let's go ahead and turn this on. So the first time you turn on the TV, you'll notice you'll have to go through some setup and configurations. So I'll do that now. One thing I just wanted to point out, with point and shoot magic remotes like this, where you'll see the cursor working as you move the remote control, I'm not a huge fan of this and I wish there is a way to turn this off because I'd rather just control it manually myself, which is quicker and easier, rather than taking some time trying to point it at the exact position. As you can see, my remote is pointed sideways away from the TV but the cursor is all over the place. So that's a bit of a shame that I can't turn that off. If you don't like that, then that's something you're going to have to live with. Right, so I've just gone through the initial setup. I haven't connected it to any set top box or anything else. So without it being connected, I just kind of skipped through the entire setup. It's got the sign not programmed because I haven't programmed it to anything yet. But as you can see, it's going through this very nice art gallery. This is very similar to the Samsung frame which I think is really great. If you wanted to have this displaying and doing a slideshow through various different artworks, then I think that's great to have it just on your wall when you're not using the TV. But of course, this will be when the TV is on. It's not the same when you turn it off like you can get with the Samsung Frame TVs, but it's a very nice touch. So now let's talk through a little bit about the WebOS. If I hit the home button on the remote control, this is where you can see the menu. And to be honest, it's pretty fluid, it's quick, and it's very easy to use. You'll see the home dashboard. If you click on this, this is where you'll get to see everything that's connected to the TV, what options you have for the inputs, what options you have for the sound, the storage, pretty much everything you need to know in terms of the settings can be found from here. You'll notice there's a whole bunch of apps there at the bottom. If you wanted to reorder any of these, so for example, I just want to move the Now TV one out of place. I just hold down the wheel on that, then it becomes draggable. You just move the cursor and then you can put it wherever you like. So I'll just click and I'll drop it there at the end. If you wanted to download more apps, then you can go to the LG content store just by clicking on that icon there. And there you go, there's plenty of different options. You can also go to all apps there at the top. These are the featured ones and you can just cycle through all of these. There's some categories on the left-hand side as well. If you wanted to find any, you can use the search icon there at the top and then search for any type of application or content that you like. Here's one that I really like. It's a fireplace. Let's go ahead and install this just to see what this looks like. Crispy high resolution 4K fireplace on the TV. So now if I go home, it should be added right to the end. There we go. Pretty nice, you've got the noise, you've got the background. And this is something just to have on the background if you're just maybe creating some videos or you just want a nice cozy atmosphere in the evening. All right, so let's take a look at the settings. If you hit the settings button on the remote control, you've got picture mode, sound mode, sound out, sleep timer, network, and all the settings. Picture mode, you have various different options. You can cycle through some of these. You've got eco, cinema, sports, game, HDR effect, filmmaker, so you have expert for bright rooms and then you have expert for dark rooms. For sound modes, you have AI Sound Pro, you have the standard sound, cinema sound, clear voice for sports, music, and game. For sound out, you can actually use this to connect to the external speakers, but this one is using the internal TV ones. You can use wired headphones and connect that via Bluetooth. You have Bluetooth option on its own. We saw speakers, mobile devices, optical, HDMI arc, audio outline, and wired headphones, Bluetooth surround sound, which I think is pretty great as well. So you can connect that to speakers that have that capability, and you have optical plus the internal TV speakers. So 
This would be something great if you connect to a soundbar. And I will have a video showcasing this TV connected to an external soundbar as well, so keep an eye out for that. You can also set a sleep timer connected to a wireless network. If you head into all settings, this is where you'll find a little bit more advanced listings in terms of the things that we've just gone through. You'll also find things about the programs, general settings about the TV, accessibility, and any support. So overall, I'm pretty happy with WebOS, it's pretty fluid. If I just hover over one of the apps, it shows some of the top rated ones in that application. So if I hover over Netflix, it shows me some recommendations. I haven't logged into any of these yet, so it's showing the default recommendations. Again, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Apple TV. These are the top most popular applications all inbuilt, so you've got no problem with that. This is where you have the art gallery, you can use a web browser. You also have sports sections. You can also play some photos and videos. You can also connect your USB to do that, listen to music, and then you can use Amazon Alexa. So loads of different options with WebOS, and to be honest, it's much more smoother than my Samsung TV ones. So over time, I will give you guys an update, but if you wanted to use voice commands, then you can also do that. If you guys have any more questions around WebOS itself and capabilities, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now let's talk a little bit about the display. So this is a 4K OLED, which has perfect pitch blacks. It also has wide viewing angles. So if you move to the side, as you can see, it's very reflective if you have windows on one side, but the viewing angles are pretty good. So if you go all the way to the sides, you'll still be able to get a clear picture of the video. It has a wide color gamut with infinite contrast ratio, and it has extremely vibrant colors. It also supports VRR, which is variable refresh rate, especially useful for next gen gaming. So we'll have more on this topic in the separate video as there's been a lot of reported issues on this topic, so I will cover that. Now this TV doesn't have a backlight, so it doesn't have local dimming, but it can dim the pixels individually so that bright objects and subtitles are displayed perfectly without any visible blooming. Now in my opinion, OLED is the best display technology you can buy for a TV and is highly recommended if you can afford it. But consider if you'll position it opposite a window or any other light source because it is very reflective. Now in terms of audio, this has Dolby Atmos giving it an immersive three-dimensional sound and it does have front firing 40 watt speakers just underneath the TV here and here. Let's go ahead and give you a demo of what you're here to see. It's the top quality 4K video and see how the video quality is including all of the vibrant colors, the deep blacks, and also, I'm gonna be switching the audio from standard mode, which is what it's set on now, to AI Sound Pro. So take a look and just remember that it might not be the same experience as you're watching it through my camera lens, so make sure you don't judge it purely off of that. But in real life, the picture quality is so sharp, so detailed, so just to bear in mind, and it's the same for the audio quality. I will leave my lavalier microphone a little bit close to the TV as well, so you can try and hear the difference in the gain of the sound rather than actual what it sounds like to me standing in front of the TV. Let's go ahead, play a demo video, and let me know what you guys think.
So hopefully you found that demo very useful. From me personally, the quality on the video, especially when I change it to vivid mode, it's so vibrant, it's so crystal clear. It's one of the best TVs I have ever owned. But more than just the video quality, audio is so important. I own a Samsung Smart TV and it's so low in volume that I need to connect the soundbar all the time to make sure I can hear everything. The audio quality on this is so powerful, it's so loud, even on volume level 30, it just makes the whole room hear very clearly what you're playing and I don't even need to go halfway. So I'm so impressed with the audio coming from the speakers in the LG C10. So overall in combination with every type of feature that is packed in this that I've showcased in this video, this is one of the reasons why this TV is definitely the best TV to get in the mid-range price bracket. Now I'm gonna have some follow-up videos. I'm gonna be testing out my PlayStation 5 and seeing this as one of the best TVs for next-gen gaming. So make sure you check out that review coming very soon. I'm also gonna be covering a bit about the variable refresh rate. There's some problems on OLED TVs around that topic. So I'm gonna keep you guys informed about all of those things. And finally, I'm gonna set this TV up with Philips Hue Ambilights to match and sync with the video on the TV and brighten up all of this white wall behind it. And I know you're really gonna like that video. So make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss all of those follow-up videos. In the meantime, I have plenty of other tech videos coming out very soon, which I know you're gonna like. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up. And if you have any other comments or questions about this TV in general, make sure you go ahead and ask me down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.